Thank you for joining this lesson number 19 statistics. The frequency table below shows the daily wages paid to casual workers by a certain company. So we have the wages here in shillings, then the number of workers who earn the given wages according to the classes. So the data is distributed such that uh, uh, the data is continuous in nature because from 100 to 150, the other class is beginning from 150 then to 200 and the other one starts at 200. So this data, we call it continuous. Uh, again, something we should note about this data is that uh, the class widths are not uniform because from 100 to 150, that is a, a class interval of 50. This is a class interval of 50, but here, we can see a class interval of 100, another one of 100, this one becomes 200. So the class intervals are different. And when class intervals are different, for a histogram, we usually plot what we call frequency density against class boundaries. And frequency density is usually given by the frequency of the class divided by the class width. Therefore, we can get the frequency densities for the respective classes, whereby we need to take 160 as the frequency, and we divide with the class width of 50. This will give us 3.2. In the next class, we will have a frequency of 120 divided by, again, a class interval of 50. This gives us 2.4. 380 divided by 100, we get 3.8. and 3 .8. Then 240 again by 100, this will take us to 2.4. Finally, we will have 100 divided by 200, that gives us a half, which is 0 0.5. So we have the frequency densities for the respective classes. So now to draw the histogram, we get into our graph here and we plot we plot uh, frequency densities against the wages. So on this axis, the vertical axis, we're going to have our frequency densities. This one is frequency densities. And on the other axis, we're going to break the axis because the data is starting from 100. So to have a better scale, we can begin from 100 in the first, in the first, uh, the first coordinate or rather where the axes are intersecting, we can break the axis such that we begin exactly at 100 so that the next becomes 200. Then we go to 300. This one is 400, 500, and 600. When we get to the frequency densities, we are ranging from 3.2, we have 0 0.5, 3.8. So we can have intervals of from 0, we can have 1, 2, 3, 4 and such. So we can now plot the upper boundaries whereby we start with 150 against 3.2. So 150 is going to be here against 3.2. Against 3.2. So 3.2 yes that is where 3.2 will be. Then the next one is 200 against 2.4. So 200 is here against 2.4, somewhere below 2.5. The other one is uh, 300 against 3.8. So 300 against 3.8, somewhere below 4. That is 3.8. The next one will be 400 against 2.4. So 400 against 2.4. This is where 2.4 is. And finally, we shall have 600 against 0 0.5. So 600 
0 0.5 is going to be here because this is 1. Then now we can come up with the bars which will give us the histogram. Remember to subscribe to this channel and uh, to also share this link with friends. Remember another setting of this question can be when we are given already the drawn histogram so that you may come up with a frequency distribution table. It should be noted that uh, the area of this bus will give us the frequencies of the respective classes. The frequencies of the respective classes. So we can be given a drawn histogram to come up with a frequency distribution table and we should be able to extract back to extract back our frequencies because if we are plotting frequency density against the the upper limits or rather the upper boundaries it should be known that when we multiply this class width and the frequency density we get back our frequency because Frequency density is given by frequency out of length. So to get back frequency, we can have frequency density and the class length multiplied. So now we can get to the answering of some question here from the histogram. State the class in which the median wedge lies. The median wedge is going to lie. Let us first of all add all the workers. We have a 160 plus 120 plus a 380 plus 240 plus 100. This is going to give us a thousand workers. And with a thousand workers, the median wage will be earned by the 500 worker. So when we divide this data by two, so 500 worker is going to lie in which class? In the first class, they are only 116, the second one, 120. So the class which is having 380 workers is the one which will contain the 500 worker. Because so far when we add up the workers, up to this class, they are going to be even 560. We can try the 660, I think. So we can try the adding 160, 120, and 380. Yeah, 660. So it means when we add these ones, we get to 80. Therefore, the remaining, after 280, the remaining 220 should be contained in this class. So the class 200 to 300 is the one which will contain the median. And that is what will give us the sixth mark. We are told again to draw a vertical line in the histogram showing where the median wedge lies. So for us to know where the median wedge lies, I've seen... I've said we should know where the 500s worker is lying. So the 500s worker, the 500s wedge, that is what will give us the median. So we can see that uh, from the first class, we are having 160 workers. That is when we multiply 50 and 3.2. That will give us 160. This one is giving us 120. And the whole of this is going to give us 360. But we only want the area which is going to give us exactly 500. So, so far we are having 280. 280. We, have, we need area in this class which will give us an area such that when we add to this one, we will get our 500. So from 500, we subtract 280. This gives us 220. Now we have to get an area of 220 inside this class. Area of 220 will be given by, we have the fixed height of the class, which is 3.8. So when we take the area and we divide by 3.8, then we need a width of 
220 divided by 3.8. This gives us 57.9. So, a class, a width of 57.9 because the height is already determined as 3.8. So, 3.8 should be multiplied by a width here of 57.9. We can round this one to 58. So according to the intervals here, from 200 up to this far, this is going to be this is going to be 50 because from 200 to 300, we have 10 divisions representing 100 units. So each division is representing 10 units. So this is going to be 50. Remember we want the 58. And up to this end, we're going to have 60. So in between 50 and 60, we're going to get our 58. Our 58 units. So we draw a line to mark the 58 mark. So along this line, we will access our median. So this one is the median. That one is the median. Because now when we multiply the area, because we say the areas of this bus are going to give us the number of workers. And we want the area that will give us 500, our median. Therefore, 160, 120. In this class, we need the remaining area of 220 to get 500 so the area of 220 now that we have a fixed height of 3.8 we need 57.9 which we have rounded to 58 and the line should be drawn along that mark so that is the median line finally we are told uh, to use the histogram to determine the number of workers who earn 450 or less per day so we get to the wages. This is the the access with wages. And uh, we want to see the number of workers who earn 450. So 450 is in between 500. This is where 450 is, between 500 and 400. So now we're going to get the number of workers who earn 450 or below. So which means the number of workers... To the left hand side of this 450 mark therefore these are the number of workers now all these workers and we should know that in this class we have 160 120 380 these ones are 240 then we add the workers who are here now not in the whole class now up to 450 which is only this part and to get the number of workers we need the height which is 0 0.5 times this width which is a uh, 50 so we're going to have all the workers added when we take 0 0.5 times 50 we get 25 so we add all these workers they are earning less than 450 or 450 per day we will have 160 plus 120 plus 380 plus 240 plus 25 and this is going to give us 925 workers. These are the people earning 450 or less.